Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Divyanka and I'm a doctor of pharmacy in the US. I am living my best professional life and here on this channel, I'm here to help you live your best, most productive life. Today's video is the second video in my mid-year series. If you guys are not aware, mid-year is a national convention that happens every single year and it's hosted by the National Pharmacy Organization, ASHP. Now mid-year is coming up and one of the aspects that people go to mid-year for is to apply for, interview for, and potentially land a fellowship for after graduation. Now, if you're here, I assume you are interested in a fellowship and are interested in the program itself. The first video in this series was about how to go about really applying the different programs, the different platforms and resources to get to all of those. And as a bonus in that video, I gave a few tips regarding the application process for fellowships through mid-year. Now in today's video, I actually wanna hone in on one of those aspects that you need while applying for fellowships, and that is the letter of intent. Almost all fellowships will ask you to provide a letter of intent for the program and it is extremely important that you really pay attention to what you're saying in these letters of intent because this is the first time the company can actually look at a piece of paper and read about you, not just do your resume where it's bulleted points. This is where you can really insert some personality, highlight the facts that you really want to highlight, and present yourself in the best way possible so that they really want to talk to the person behind the paper and set up interviews with you. So I have a list of things that you shouldn't do while writing your letter of intent. And as I list these, I'll provide a little more context into the topic itself. And of course, as always, I really hope this is helpful, especially for those of you out there who are applying to fellowships right now. Now the first thing you should not do regarding your letter of intent is to make it more than one page. Just like a normal cover letter, you should not make your letter of intent more than one page. No one is going to read past that. And honestly, if you're putting in that much information, you are not highlighting the correct information. You're probably not getting the preliminary attention from the reader that you want. And of course, we don't want all of that happening. So definitely limit your letter of intent to one page. And that includes the proper formatting, which would include an address, contact information at the top, at the bottom, etc. As overall good practice, I would actually say to keep your letter of intent to about two paragraphs max or three short paragraphs. And again, you really wanna highlight the most important things about yourself and how you are going to be an asset to the company and to the program. And you really just want to gain the attention of the reader to then gain that next step preliminary phone call interview. The second thing you definitely do not want to do is address your letter to the wrong person. Now you're going to be writing a lot of letters of intent and you're going to be uploading them many, many times for your many different applications. Now, one tip I had in my other video is to stay organized and here is where it's starting to shine through. You really need to stay organized in terms of every aspect of the application process. You don't wanna send the wrong document to the wrong company, to the wrong program. And of course, mistakes happen, but but be organized and make sure that you're eliminating as many mistakes as possible. When addressing people in your letters of intent, sometimes it's going to be the program director, sometimes it's going to be the person in charge of the fellowship at that company, sometimes it might just be the head of that department, it could be someone at the school affiliated. Usually most of the programs will say who to write it to and that's where you really want to gather those details and make sure that you pick up on those things. Again, not every company and not every fellowship program is going to have that information in the same place. So go digging for it. Make sure you are addressing it to the person who they say you should address it to. And if they don't have it, then best practice is usually the head of the fellowship program or the hiring manager or the head of the department in terms of fellowships for the program you're applying to. Third thing you really do not want to do is to rewrite your whole resume in basically sentence format for your letter of intent. Again, I've said this multiple times already now in this video, but highlight what is most important. All of the details that you want in your resume are already gonna be there in your resume. Your letter of intent is there to bolster your application. So really make sure that you're taking these two to three paragraphs, 
highlighting the important aspects, really highlighting the skills that you have that are going to be a big asset for the program, for the company, for the position, and highlight it in a way where you really stand out as a candidate. Everyone is going to be talking about leadership. Everyone's going to be talking about the courses they took, about the industry rotations and possible internships that people have had, but really highlight the skills that they are looking for and match them with the skills that you have gained throughout your experiences. And that's really how you should write your letter of intent. Again, they already have your resume, so there's honestly no point in taking the words on your resume and putting them into a sentence format and putting them on your letter of intent. That's going to be boring, it's not going to stand out, and they will probably not notice your application. The next thing you definitely don't wanna do is not write in chronological order. Although I said to not rewrite your resume, the format of your resume still stands. You write your resume in chronological order and you want to do that for your letter of intent. Why this is helpful is because it portrays a story. It tells them how you got from point A to point B. So as you're telling the story, you know, five years ago, I had XYZ internship, which led me to this, which led me to that. In the middle of that, you're really highlighting the top skills that you gain from each of those experiences and how useful they can be for that program and for that company. And that's really how you should tell your story. Now, just as a caveat on your resume, you put your most recent at the top, but when you're writing your letter of intent, kind of go back to as many years as you want to, maybe the beginning of pharmacy school or wherever your most interesting experience lies. Start from there in the past and make your way to the present. Again, that's still in chronological order, but it's just the opposite of kind of your resume, so just beware of that. But again, it really helps outline that story, it makes it clear, and it helps your reader string along to exactly what you're trying to convey to them. The next thing you don't want to do for your letter of intent is to not have a purpose. Now, of course, the letter in and of itself has a purpose. It is a letter of intent for the program. But you, as the writer of this letter of intent, really have to make it clear as to your purpose of the letter itself. Don't just state random facts about yourself. Don't just highlight random skills about yourself and not tie them into one holistic story. Even if you just put your story in chronological order, that's not enough. Every point you make, you have to tie back to the fact of why you're applying to this fellowship program and how what you've mentioned in your letter ties back to the whole purpose of you applying to this program and potentially being a part of the team. Don't let your reader think so much. Draw the lines for them. Be like, hey, I had this experience which helped me to form this skill and this is going to help you because X, Y, Z and that is why I'm applying for this program to be a part of your team. Again, draw those lines, draw those parallels, connect the dots for your reader don't assume that they're gonna do it themselves. Identify your strengths, identify your skills, and tie it straight back to you applying for this program and you being a part of this team. The more clear you make it, the better it is for your reader to then have those points actually click, and that way you ensure that anything that you wanted to highlight was actually conveyed in your letter. Now, the last thing that you do not want to do for your letter of intent is be ingenuine. Fun fact, did you know ingenuine is not a real word? I typed it up in the script for this video and I saw that it had the red squiggly line underneath. I looked it up and indeed it is not a word. I didn't know that, but here I am still using it. Anyway, you don't want to be ingenuine in your letter of intent. That is the easiest way to lose candidacy for the next step. If your letter sounds robotic, if it feels like you just copy and pasted something, the reader is not going to like that. They're not going to connect with the letter and therefore they're probably not going to invite you for further rounds of interviews. Kind of write the letter as if you're talking to the person in an interview. That exercise really helped me while I was writing my letters of intent because again, when you're talking to someone in an interview, you are going to be professional, but you're gonna have that sense of personability. You're going to try to connect with the person. So do the exact same thing in your letter in writing format. Of course, the preliminary foundation of your letter should be in a completely professional manner, but you can definitely add flavors of personality even throughout your letter. And again, you want to do that because that's going to be easier for the reader to connect with the letter and really recognize that there's a person on the other side of this application and they're going to want to talk to you. So that is definitely one of the most important things. Be genuine. And of course, this kind of relays throughout the whole interview process. Be genuine. 
be yourself. And I know a lot of people say that, but actually do that. Mention little caveats that really only pertain to you. Those things will stand out. You'll be recognized for your personality and it's really going to help you in this whole process. So overall, I really hope those tips are helpful for you to write your letters of intent. If you guys have any follow-up questions, don't be afraid to ask them in the comments below or email me. I've mentioned this a few times now, but a lot of you guys have reached out via email. I really appreciate it. I do take the time to respond and I hope that it's helpful for you guys. So especially right now when you guys are writing your letters of intent, I'm sure many other questions will prop up. So go ahead and ask them in the comments below for others to see as well, or go ahead and email me. And if it's a big enough question, I might just make a video about it because if it's going to help you, it's going to help other people. But Overall, I really hope this is helpful for you guys. Good luck in writing your letters of intent and applying for fellowships. I wish you all the best. I say this all the time, but I actually had such a fun time throughout the process last year. Of course, this doesn't mean put in your full effort. Definitely do that. Put in effort, stay organized, stay updated, make sure you are well prepared. But besides that, it is really fun actually talking to a lot of people, gaining the different insight, being exposed to so many people in the pharmaceutical industry, it's a grand time. And I think even with mid-year being virtual, there's a lot to take away from it. So enjoy those little aspects. Don't be stressed about it. Be prepared. Work towards the applications, work towards the interviews, and it will bring you success. That is it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys as always, and you guys will see me in my next one. Mm -hmm.